Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with another Spellbinders New Collection Inspiration Blog Hop. This time I'm going to feature Inked Messages by Stephanie Lowe. You can see this one is Bloom Where You Are Planted. The first one that I showed was called A Rose by Any Other Name. And then this last one here is called Rough Waters. You can see that each of these stamp sets are red rubber, which very rarely will you not get an awesome stamped image. And then you can see they also have the coordinating dies for each of the images. Well, even if it's a sentiment, you get a die for that as well. And as always, on the back of all of their packaging, they have some beautiful inspiration just to get you kick-started um, to make your card. So let's start with the first one. The, for the first card, I chose to use Bloom Where You Are Planted. I just love that sentiment, um, that saying. I think it is a wonderful quote. I'm going to start off here by stamping my sentiment with my Versamark ink and I'm going to be using my gold embossing powder and I also stamped the large and the small flowers. So I have six of the small and two of the large. I'm going to real quick grab my craft mat that yes I did cut down because I like them to be smaller and here I have spice marmalade uh, picked raspberry and wild honey. I'm also using tumbled gl uh, glass, evergreen bough, and peacock feathers. So for the three, I'm going to call them the three blues, even though I know one of them's not. That's what I'm going to use um, after I embossed my flowers. I'm going to use those three colors for each of these flowers. Now, because of the length of the video, I'm not going to show all of the coloring. So I'm going to show some of it in some cases, but not all of it. So when it comes to my distress inks and when I'm using them this way, I like to put a base coat down and then just drop the color in and let it do its thing. So that is off to the side, drying, having a grand old time. I then grabbed one of my Simon Says Stamp ink. It's barely beige. I love what this ink does when you watercolor with it. So the piece that I'm using here, now the other piece that I used, I'm sorry, was a piece of Canson XL watercolor. And so is this one. And you can see, I'm just going to town stamping. I'm going over the image. I don't care that I'm overlapping, um, but I'm just stamping away between the large and the small flower. I want to fill this panel up. Now it will be cut down, but I just wanted to make sure that this was filled. I do have some open spaces, but not many. We don't leave many. And you can see, you can barely see it. Hence the name Barely Beige. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna call these my pink tones, my, my warm tones. And I've put those down on my craft mat as well. And I'm gonna grab one of my large uh, flat brushes. This is my Ranger one inch. And I'm going to put water across this. I don't want it dripping. I just want to have some moisture on that page. And look what's happening. That barely beige gets darker. It doesn't smear. It's just awesome. I, I loved, this is awesome to use if you're doing no line watercoloring as well. And I'm just going to apply these colors down. I don't want to be neat. I don't want to be perfect. I just want to get that sense of color in the background. And you can see as I put those colors on top of those stamped flowers, they're turning into that shade, a darker shade of that color. So they're not staying brown, but they're actually, it's absorbing the ink. So the Simon Says ink is actually absorbing the ink. It's really cool. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that, did you? but it's really cool. And you can really see those images. I did use my heat gun to dry this. I'm going to mix all those colors together. I'm going to use a smaller round brush and I'm going to splatter that color across the panel. And you can see it just gives it a little bit of fleck for the background. I've pulled out all my dies, even for my sentiment, and I'm going to cut my panels out. And I used one of my Spellbinder frame dies from my stash, 
and now I'm going to use my vintage photo around each of the pieces. I used it around the background and every flower and even the sentiment. We all know, if you've seen my previous videos, I love vintage photo. It's always going around a panel or something. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive and I'm going to put my panel down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base. That is the card base that I will be using throughout this video, just in case I forget to say, because you know I will. I'm going to use two of my acrylic blocks and press that down onto the back panel. And now I'm just going to look at my pieces and just try to, to look at that background and say, okay, where are we going to place these? I know my sentiment was going to go down in the bottom right hand corner and I wanted it to come off the panel. Um, to me, that adds some movement. Um, it's not so, um, at least for this card, I didn't want it to what I call matchy-matchy or boxy-boxy, um, where everything is set at a 90-degree angle. I do like my images to come off of the design panel or even come off the card base so that they would be trimmed. Um, again, I just think it adds uh, what I call movement to that card. So now between foam squares and liquid glue, I am just going to go to town and place all of my flowers, both the large and the small and my sentiment down onto my watercolor background. So once I knew that my sentiment was gonna be there, I did play around with some of the placement of the flowers, um, but I knew that was gonna sit there, so I'm immediately adhering that and now I'm just coming in and layering my flowers off of the sentiment. I think with these colors, the flowers just stand out a little bit with the gold embossing and also the blue and green shades that I used or deep teals, whatever we would like to call them. I pulled out my Nouveau drops of Morning Dew. These are clear drops and I'm just adding them to the centers of all the flowers. And what's great, it will actually pick up the ink from what they are sitting on. That was our first. So now for our second, and please, I, I do apologize. I literally lost my lighting. <laughs> so this is my new lighting and I'm still playing with it. So bear with me. It's, it's a process. So I pulled out my tumbled glass. I pulled out my broken china and I pulled out the faded jeans. The stamp set we're going to use is called Rough Waters. I showed that in the beginning. And I'm just using my finger sponge daubers just to lay down some color. Don't need to do a lot of blending here because I am going to soak this with some water. Again, if you've seen my previous videos, I love to just get my oxides down onto the paper and then let the water do the magic. Um, just let them merge and meld together and blend and everything else all on their own. So while two of them look very close, you get that faded jeans in there and you're like, oh, that's a little too dark, um, but it will blend beautifully once I have the water and now I pick it up and I just keep shifting it. I let the water take over and pull that ink wherever that wants to go. I do like to let my oxides dry on their own. Um, you get a special effect. You get that oxidation. I did choose the uh, broken china and my faded jeans and I'm going to do some ink smushing on top of this just to create some bubbles and texture. Um, they do blend together but again because they were drops they kind of create a, a bubble effect. So I pulled out my stamp positioner and I have the sentiment and I have the anchor and I'm going to stamp these down onto some Nina Solar Crest 80 pound and I'm using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I am going to Copic color the anchor on that page. Now I'm keeping that anchor in its place. Now again, I'm not gonna show all of the coloring, I know, um, but I do have the Prisma colors, so I pulled some colors out and they're just shades of gray and brown. Um, for the anchor and the rope that's going around. I didn't want to add any color to the leaves because they were basically solid. 
but I didn't want to add any accents. So once I have my coloring done, I want to put this back into my stamp positioner and I'm going to clean off those stamps and I'm going to use my Versamark ink. So I want to emboss over this. You want to do, if you're doing alcohol markers, you want to do the coloring first and then go back over with, if you want to emboss, um, the alcohol marker will nick away at your embossing line if you do that first. So you can see that gold just, it changed the object because now you saw gold instead of the black outline. Either one was just as pretty, um, but I just really liked the gold. I, I was in a gold embossing mood. I used gold for the first one. I'm using gold for this one. I don't think I used gold for the last one. So I'm going to do the same things to the flowers. I used my Prisma colors. I colored those ends just using shades of corals. I left a white tip on the flower and shades of green. And I'm going to do the same thing. I kept the stamp in its position. I stamped this image three times, four times actually. One of them got messed up. And you can see them there. So you can see how much they changed because there's the black one in the upper right hand corner. So just by doing that, you get a different look. So I have my panel that I cut out. I, again, I used one of my frame dies from Spellbinders. I believe this one's called Deckled Edge. I'm sorry, I forget what the other one um, was called, but I'll have everything linked below. And now I'm just going to place all of my pieces down. So I'm going to put the flowers down first and I want that blue panel on top. My card base is a dark gray. And once my flowers are in place, they're actually going to come out from underneath the panel that the anchor and the sentiment are going to sit on. And I'm going to set that off to the right hand side because I really want to see the flowers. Now, I probably should have shifted that. There's a lot going on on this card, but I really enjoyed um, coloring these and, and just um, stamping with these images. I am a red rubber fan. Um, when it comes to stamps, I love my photopolymers too, um, but I do like the look of a red rubber stamp. It's very crisp. There's that vintage photo ink again, and I'm going to go around the sentiment, and I'm going to go around the anchor. I also did go around the panel, the water panel that I have in the back as well. I thought it was just too bright coming off of all of that. So I just wanted, just by adding that vintage photo, you kind of tone it down a little bit when it comes to the brightness. I'm going to set my anchor on top and I'm going to make sure that goes off the top. And then my sentiment's going to be placed in the opposite corner and that's going to come off that panel as well. I've pulled out my morning dew gloss drops again from Nouveau and I'm just putting some kind of like bubbles so to speak because we're looking at the ocean um, but just setting those around in groups of three and four around those two focal points. So for our last card I'm using a rose by any other name and you know this one was tough I didn't know if I wanted to do the rose or if I wanted to do the girl but I did go with the rose and I'm using my Gina K um, black ink, her new ink that's out, uh, Amalgam. And I'm stamping this a couple times. I'm actually going to use my colored pencils. Now, I thought I was going to use this rose three times because, you know, I always stamp in threes. I, we're only going to see one. Now, again, I'm not showing all of the coloring here, um, but I really enjoyed coloring this flower. Uh, colored pencils are my choice medium um, for coloring. Uh, you know, I've got everything. I've got watercolors. I've got the real brush pens. I've got the ink tents. I've got it all. Um, but I do love to color with my colored pencils. Um, these are my Prisma colors, and I do also have the polychromos as well. But that's our image. Um, that is our rose. I did want the black lines to come through, but I wanted them to be faint. So I was okay with the colored pencils going over them. 
I used the die that just cuts out beautifully. And the paper that I used when I color pencil, uh, there's a couple. My first go-to is Bristol. Now, you can, real quick, the sentiment that I use is actually from one of the dies of the month club from May. And it's the small die. Um, so they're really neat. They actually create the panel so you can either have it coming off the top um, or anything like that. Um, but as I said, this paper here that I used uh, is Bristol. Uh, my cardstock, of course, is four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's black. And I'm using my silver Prismacolor pencil to create my dots. So if you don't have the drops or sequins or do drops or anything, you can just use a colored pencil to create those areas um, to create texture and so forth. And I find I do that a lot. Um, it's quick. It's easy. If you have glossy accents and colored pencils, you can put some glossy accents on these and you can create your own enamel dots um, just by drawing circles. I've propped up my rows with some foam squares and I'm going to set my sentiment in place using my liquid adhesive. And then once that's set in place, I'm going to grab my white gel pen. Now there is also another paper um, that I do use. It's by Strathmore and it's their sketch pads. I do like the tan toned and I love using the gray toned. Um, they also, believe it or not, have a third one and it's their blue toned. Imagine that. Um, they're very great. They've got great tooth and that's what I look for. I like a lot of tooth on my paper for my colored pencils. Um, now the sketch pads, the paper is thin. It's not cardstock weight, but I did find those three tones in a w over a hundred pound weight. It's actually mixed media paper. So I've been playing around with that and it's by Strathmore. Um, so same tones. So those are my four um, papers. And I say four because of the colors and the types um, that I will use for colored penciling. So that is our last card. So I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks that I gave you. And most of all, I hope you enjoyed these products. Don't forget, there's a blog hop going on. So make sure you go to my blog. Make sure you hop everywhere. There are so many crafters and wonderful designers that are going to be part of this blog hop. Please visit each of their channels to see the wonderful creations that they created. Of course, I'm showing here the close-ups of the cards that we made today. And keep looking because Spellbinders is doing a giveaway. So the details for that giveaway will be on my blog and of course everybody else's. So make sure you read that. I hope you join the giveaway and I wish you luck. I hope you win. And if you do, let me know. I love to hear it when somebody wins. Um, I know the last one I did, somebody did let me know. So that was awesome. So congratulations. I hope everyone's having a great day. But of course I need to say, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I'd love to have you here as part with my group. We have a lot of fun. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I do try to answer each and every comment. Just bear with me. I will get back to you. The products that I used will be linked down below. Even those little extras um, that maybe I didn't know the name for, they will also be listed as well. And hey, if I forgot something, I am human. I sometimes do that. Just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure I'll get that link updated in my video description and also directly into your comment. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy this blog hop, but always remember what I think is most important. Always be creative.